this is going to be a fun project. I'm going from four wet cell six volt interstate batteries that I bought at Costco for about $100 each. They're close to four years old. Um, they seem to be working fine still, but I've decided to go to a lithium battery. So I'm going to a Battleborn battery, two 12 volt batteries uh, of the Battleborn lithiums. They're gonna be a lot lighter than this. The batteries, these batteries are pretty heavy. I think they're 60 to 70 pounds each. The two Battleborns are 30 pounds each. So that's a significant decrease in weight um, on this. So I'll be having decreasing my tongue weight. I'm going to try my best to show you how I do this install from start to finish. Uh, I won't bore you with little details. I'll be removing the batteries and not going through the whole process of it and then showing how I put the new ones in. Um, so this should be a fun project. This battery box, I really like it. I'm going to keep this battery box and just put my two batteries in here. Rather than relocating my new batteries to another location, I'm just going to keep them in here. So I'm going to put in the description below links to my battery box and battery install for this and my solar system which i have on the roof i had 200 watts and then i changed it to 400 watts so i'll show you uh, links in the description below that you can watch those videos later if you like so let's go inside and look at what i've purchased I'm going to sneak this video in here right now of uh, the completed project. Just part of it. This is just the batteries and the converter um, charger has been installed also. But I want to stick this in here because nobody watches the videos to the end or they skip through it. So I just want to let you know, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you subscribe to the channel. And if you can, just hit the like button. Um, I'll get more views that way. And... Um, on youtube they put it out in front of others if they see a lot of thumbs up um, i hope this video is helpful to you in some way and i just want to let you know that i provide uh, all the the uh, parts and materials i use in the description below so you can look at them and um, know what i use and there'll be links so you can purchase them through amazon or somewhere else if you like okay so thanks for watching and feel free to comment or ask questions or anything. I do the best I can to get back to you. And like I said, I hope you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get future videos. So enjoy the video. So here's what I purchased so far. I have a two 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium batteries from Battleborn, which uh, when I called to order them, uh, they're known as Dragonfly Energy. So I thought I had the wrong phone number. Um, I asked them some questions about the batteries. I watched for them to be on sale. So you can get them on either Amazon or buy them directly, but uh, I recommend watching for them on sale. You'll get a better price. Uh, then here is the uh, power converter that you'll need for the lithium batteries. It's a progressive. There's other ones out there you can purchase, um, but I went with this one. You can't use your regular uh, converter uh, charger, it's a converter charger, to charge these batteries. They just aren't designed to do it. This one charges the batteries faster and the more of a full charge. It says right on here, this unit is only capable with lithium batteries. And that should be a fairly easy chain out. And then it says to chain out your, um, it's a control board for this unit here. So I'm going to change that out. I'll show you how I do that. Um, it came with a good instructions here, how to do all this. Um, and then on the Battleborn batteries, they got good information on the batteries, how to wire it up. Um, since I'm going to be inside a box, 
uh, in the front where I'm doing the six volt batteries. I bought these trays here. And I hope you can see this. There's um, four locations to bolt it down. The strap will go around the battery. Uh, so the batteries will fit right in here. I'll be able to strap them in place. I don't want them bouncing around. Uh, I have clamps to clamp the wire to the frame, which is a, mine calls for a, a four gauge wire to go from the batteries to my converter charger. Um, and I'll supply links below in the description of how you can figure out what size wire you need. Um, and also with the battery, Battleborn has a chart in here. You can look it up and see for the length that like this is a 55 55 uh amps and so you just look across how many feet you're running to from your batteries to your uh converter charger and you can figure that out or you can give them a call that's what i did uh with uh with the the, the progressive I called them and said, Hey, I'm going this distance. What size wider wire would you recommend? And they said that. So that's what I went with. So let's go over to uh, my power control center where this will go in place. And I'll show you that where, where it is. Here's the power center in my trailer. Mine's located just below the refrigerator. This is the location. Once I uh, open this all up, where I'll be installing my new um, converter charger in place here. And this also replacing all this here where the fuses are, this whole control board. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. There's two screws here. Once I have this off, then there's four other screws that I'll be removing. Um, and then I'll show you what it looks like inside there. But first I'm gonna turn off uh, my batteries, my uh, Power, shore power coming in, my inverter. I'm gonna make sure everything is off because I don't want any power going to this. And then I'll be working with a, a portable light in here uh, during this. So none of this will be live on me. I don't want to get electrocuted. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll get back to you here. I have the cover off here below the refrigerator. So off this uh, converter charger, there's white, black, and green right here. I'm gonna disconnect those. And then here's my other unit, the new one, right? So here's white, black, and green. And I'm just gonna connect, remove them from here, and then on here, and then I'm gonna put these right onto there. So I'm going to do one thing at a time. And then the other wires here, these go over here. They come over here. They will be going over to this panel, the new panel here, which will be like that, not like that. Okay. And then this wire here has special plug-ins here. This will plug in right here. And then it'll go to the round to this board and it'll plug into here. So I'm going to go ahead right now, take these wires off and then connect these wires. So I've um, disconnected these wires and connected these to here. There's two screws right here. I've loosened them already. I'll take them out of the way. This unit should slide out like this. The wires are still connected here, as you can see. So on this one, these are the two wires here that will come off the new unit and connect on here. So looking at these boards, they're slightly different. You can see here, this here, is different than this. This is up and down. Um, and then same with the positive right now, it's coming in this way. 
and somehow it's gonna have to go in this way. So that's gonna be pretty tight coming around there, I think. And then here, right now it's easy, it's coming in the top. So this wire and this wire might have to come in from this way and go into here. We'll see, because it's really tight back here. And then there's here another positive it's coming in, so it's actually the same way, so it, it would go in easily. So uh, I'm gonna see how to remove this. I think on this, you push down a tab over here, and this whole unit comes out. So I'll let you know in a minute how that works. So what I've decided to do, I got all these big ones loose here. These were a uh, pretty good bear to get off. I used a strong, big tip, Phillips on it and just cranked on it. So I'm glad they were tight. Um, so you've got to make sure these are tight when you put everything back together so you don't have any problems in the future. I'm going to pull these out. These go to the converter charger that we're replacing. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out like that. Now it's all free like this. So I'm going to just take this and put it to the side. And then this here. And then what I've decided to do, I took a picture of this. And there's, um, so I remember where it goes. But um, a lot of these wires are the same. There's a one here with a orange and white, orange and white, orange and white, orange and yellow, orange and yellow, or not orange and yellow and white. There's a bunch of them that are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do them like this. I'm going to do them one at a time. Uh, take one off and then put it on here until I got them all uh, to be safer that way and then I'll transfer the fuses over to, to the, the new one. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I got the new one in. That, that was the way to go just switching the wires from here to here. It was a lot easier doing it that way. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the fuses on here Leave the fuses there. Um, on this one, it says um, 30. These are 30 amp fuses, and the old one is 40 amp. So I'm just going to leave the 30 amps in here and see how it works. There's got to be a reason for that. Um, it says don't exceed 30 amps max. So uh, I'm going to leave these 30s here and not use the 40s, but I'm going to transfer everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So now I gotta put this in place, this um, converter charger, got all my wires. I got the wires hooked up from that up to this panel so I can slide this in. They are labeled, so this says it's positive and the white one is negative, common. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this loose for now the way this works, I just, I'll zoom in here. There's a little bracket here that came with the, the converter charger with a little tab here. And it's gonna slide in place and lock in place. That's what they say anyway. We'll see how that works. So the way this goes, turns around like this. Make sure my wires are loose here. And as you can see, I installed the wire here that plugs into here. And then it also plugs into here. I'm going to slide it in and hope it works like this. I don't know how to do this. There's a little groove in the back where it slides into place. So hopefully I get it in there. And these little tabs here lining up. And then it's locked in. So that's all there is to that. So now I'm going to remove these four screws. Let me zoom out a little bit. 
these four screws here so I can remove this panel to get in back here because I'm going to need to replace these wires that come from the battery. They're 8 gauge and I need 4 gauge wire. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll remove those four screws. So I have this electrical panel removed here with the four screws that I was talking about. The wires that came through, these go to the battery right here. The red one goes, it's 8 gauge. I need to replace it with um, 4 gauge. It goes directly through, down, and it goes all the way to the front of my trailer to my battery. And then the white wire, which is the uh, neutral ground, it is an eight gauge. It needs to be a four gauge. And the, what it does, it goes to this right here. You can see me moving the wire to that. And then the other wire goes off and it goes ground to the frame of the trailer. So I'm going to remove this wire and it won't be needed anymore. And what I've done, as you can see back there, you can see that white wire moving and the black one next to it, they're the same size. I drilled a hole through the floor and I drilled it. This uh, wire is roughly three eighths of an inch thick. So I drilled just under three eighths of an inch, drilled through it, the floor, ran the wires from underneath and then up here. And this one here is gonna hook up to my uh, neutral or ground. And then it's gonna go to the frame of the trailer. I'm gonna bolt it to the frame and then I'll do the same at the battery side. I'll bolt to the frame and then up to the negative side on the battery. And I'll show you that later. So rather than run a wire all the way, I'm gonna use the frame as the wire. And that's what they've done, they did before with this other wire. The black wire is my positive wire. I'm gonna put red tape on the end here so it's labeled uh, red because I couldn't find any uh, red wire and I'm going to use that as a positive and it goes through the floor right next to that white wire and it goes straight down and I'm going to run it right up to the batteries to the positive side of the batteries. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this all up and then close it up and show you what it looks like. I'm going to sneak this in here. I forgot to mention that eight gauge wire that I had that went to the uh, converter charger in it right here. Um, since I'm not using it anymore, I've switched to that um, four gauge. I've decided just to um, cap off the end here, put an end cap on it, and then um, put some tape on it. I'm just going to leave it connected. I followed it down to the battery and it splits off. It looks like it feeds a couple things off the battery. So I'm just not going to abandon it completely. I'll just cap this off and leave it in case I need it in the future. So just want to let you know about that. Um, I'm not going to just leave the wire in there loose with no end cap on it because it's live. Alrighty. Well, I thought it was going to be able to close this up easily, but I found out that this board is a little different and than this one originally came with it. This one has one piece here. The other one has a protective cover on the back. So it just doesn't go in and clip in place. But they do have a hole here with a metal grommet that goes through. So I got this screw here. I just went and found one in my screw tray that I have extra screws. If you're going to have to do it like I am, you're going to have to find a screw at your house or go to a hardware store and find one. I'm not sure what size it is. It happens to just line up with this little extension that comes out here with a hole in it. I had to ream the hole out just a little bigger so it would take the screw and screw in there maybe about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. Without splitting, I had, I had to drill the hole a little bigger. 
where it would have split and broke it. And if it had, then I'd take a, a wood block and screw it in place around the back side and then be able to screw into it with a wood screw. So this should work. Um, another thing that um, I found out here, this wire is so thick, this four gauge, that if I come in the holes here, it's gonna be really hard to turn and make these turns in, into these connections here. So I'm gonna drill a hole in the back here and over here. That's why I have the blue tape here. So I'm gonna drill right back here in the back and then I'll be able to come straight in the back. So I'll be coming straight in and then a 90 into these here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill them with this. I step drill, so I'm going to drill them from the back side. So I'm going to drill these and then come back to you. I got both the holes drilled here. So now they'll come straight in the back. I just drilled them a little bit bigger than these um, wires, so they'd be nice and tight in there. Um, while I'm here, see, this is what I was talking about. It's made a little different, like that. This one's a single panel and this has got a double panel. So that's why I need to utilize this and that um, hole there to screw it in to hold it in place. So that's that's my solution for that. Maybe there's another solution, but that's what I'm going with. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend these at a 90 degree angle so that they will screw into here. So I'll come back to you in a few minutes. Got everything back together here. And as you can see, uh, I had to bend this uh, four gauge wire pretty sharp. It just fit. And then I have my screw right here into the little peg helping hold it in place. I did, when I pushed this in place, I did feel it click down here. So, um, but I went ahead and put this in just in case to make sure it holds it nice and tight. Um, all my wires are in place. This is all wrapped up. And then I installed the sticker here that they gave just to show that it's been retrofitted. So now, after all this is done, I'm gonna go start running all my wires underneath the, uh, the trailer up to the batteries. And just so you know, I forgot to mention this earlier. I said I had the shore power off and the batteries turned off and the solar turned off. I also have um, the batteries completely disconnected, um, so not just turned off. So that's why all these wires aren't live here. So let's go outside. I'm going to put this cover back on and then uh, go outside and start running the wires to the front of the trailer. Right now we're directly under the trailer where I ran those two wires. This is the ground, the negative. It'll um, be for the negative for the battery. And this is a positive wire. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it probably about every two feet with red tape to show that it's a positive wire. Um, and then what I'll do is on the battery and I'll take this wire, uh, same type of wire, and I'll do it from the negative post to the frame. So this frame will act as a ground um, to run it all the way down to the front of the trailer. And then I'll be strapping the wire along this all the way to the front of the trailer. Okay, so here's how I solder these ends into the wire. That I've been doing. Um, I did it with my um, battery terminals too when I did that project. Just put in a vise and then I get my wire ready. I strip the end on it. And I just check. I just have it so I can see the the wire just slightly in there. I take this. I have a small torch here. You can light it. Leave it on. You can see the glow. I heat this up. I just hold the torch there with the blue tip on it. It gets hot. I'm not going to do this, but I'm just showing you how I, I uh, heat this up. 
Then after it's warm, I just feed my electrical solder in there. Make sure you use electrical solder. Plumbing solder will not work. So, uh, and then I just feed it in until it melts and it fills it with solder, maybe about three quarters of the way or a little more. So when I'm, I'm heating that up, I'll be holding this just above it, heating this copper without burning this jacket here on the wire. And then what I'll do is I'll keep it hot, both of them hot, stick it in there, heat it for, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds like that. And then uh, I'll see it all melted together. I'll pull this away and then I'll just hold this until I feel it goes stiff. It probably takes, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, because it's pretty hot, so it stays uh, pliable for a little longer than a small wire. I let go of it. I slide a, a jacket, heat shrink tubing over it. It's usually a little shorter than that. Slide that over like that. And then I just take my torch and just heat it slightly and it shrinks around it nice and tight. And then I'm done. So hope that tip helps you. Um, you can buy these uh, at the store. I'll put a, a link to it in the um, description below the video. There you go. Here we are. I have the silicone around the wires. And you can see I have the black wire with the red tape around it so I know it's a positive and negative and I have it strung all the way to the front of the trailer and I've zip tied it probably about every 20 inches and I have the tape maybe red tape about every two feet and I ran it all the way to the front of the trailer and so right now it's just underneath the uh, battery box and I'll wire into that after I get my batteries out and my new batteries in. So let's go around to the front of the trailer to the battery box. So my wires are ran from back here behind the tires, up here along the frame to the battery area. So right now I've got the batteries, uh, wires here all taken off. And the batteries are ready to come out, so I'm going to lift them out right now. The four six-volt batteries are removed. I'll tell you what, those things are heavy. I forgot how heavy they are. So I have these trays, four trays in here I'm going to remove. And I have rivets here that I'm going to drill out so I can remove them. And then I'll lay out for my new 12-volt batteries. So the bottom line here is this is 59.4 pounds, the wet cell, six volt. The lithium 12 volt battery is 31 pounds. So if I have two of these batteries, it's 61 pounds. If I have four of these batteries, it's 237.6 pounds. And that means that I'm saving on weight by eliminating these batteries, 176.6 pounds, which is a considerable amount of weight. So this battery weighs 28.4 pounds less than this six volt battery. So that's a considerable amount, plus this battery will last a lot longer than this one. So these Battleborn batteries fit in here very nicely. And it looks like I can utilize these cables that I had before, the two uh, cables for the negative and positive. So the way this goes with 12 volt batteries is positive to positive, negative to negative. And then I'll just come up with my negative terminals, connect them here, my positive terminals, connect them there. It's pretty easy install. Uh, and then these batteries uh, I got don't have a built-in heater. They just came out with ones that have a built-in heater, but I think they're roughly $100 more. So I don't really need them in our climate in California. 
but sometimes we do camp in areas where it is uh, cooler. So what I'll do is I'll just insulate the box with the uh, hardboard uh, insulation just to keep it a little bit warmer. But I don't think I even need to do that, but I'm gonna do that just for fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and these are just setting in here. I got it laid out and I got tape there where the boxes go roughly. I'm gonna take the batteries out and then bolt those trays down. I have the battery pans bolted in place. And you can see here, I used quarter inch bolts, but I had to grind the head so that they would fit down in there. You can see there. So and then I have the lock nuts on the bottom. So I got these in place. The straps are in place here. Also, I've drilled holes in the bottom here where I'm gonna come through with my wires that come from the uh, the uh, charger, those charger wires. I'm gonna um, run those up here to the batteries too. I'm gonna go directly to them. So I'm ready to go with that. I got some grommets that will go in place uh, so that wires won't be rubbing on the metal. So I'm gonna put the grommets on now. Here's a positive wire underneath the battery box that comes from the converter charger down and it comes over here to the kill shutoff switch. And then I'm gonna bring you over here so you can see the fuse that I installed. So with this uh, fuse here, it comes from the, the positive side of the batteries down through the hole here that I I drilled and I used the grommet. It's a 3 8 inch grommet and it's drilled at a half inch. Comes around here and it goes to a 70 amp fuse, which is uh, what I was told by uh, Progressive Industries to install. And then I got, it goes over here to the shutoff. So it goes to the other side of the shutoff. Then let's see, it goes the other side of the shutoff and then the converter wire goes here that I just showed you a minute ago. So the negative wire goes right there to the frame and up to the negative side of the battery. So 70 amp fuse is what I installed here. They said since it's a 55 amp um, converter charger, you go about 20, 25% above that. So then it calls for a 70 amp fuse. So I'll put links to all these products I used in the description below. So let's go up above. I had this around the house, it's an inch and a half. Um, in rigid insulation. So I've marked it out to uh, install the insulation on the sides. And I'm, these vents, I put these vents in here originally for the lead acid batteries. These Battleborn uh, closed up uh, lithium uh, batteries don't need venting. So I'm gonna put my insulation over those. This way I can kind of control the temperature in the box. Uh, so if it's really cold out, it'll stay uh, a little warmer. If it's too hot out, it'll stay a little cooler. So I'll put a link below uh, to Battleborn uh, has a video about talking about temperatures in their batteries. So I'll put that in the link below. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this insulation and install it. All the pieces are cut. They're just uh, dry fit in place. So what I'm gonna do is on this top edge, since this, uh, this styrofoam is really soft, I'm gonna protect it. I have some of this tape that I've had around the house for a while, silver tape, and I'm just gonna put it along the top edges. And then um, to stick it in place, I'm just gonna put uh, behind here this uh, double-sided Gorilla mounting tape just in a few spots to hold it in place. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then come back to you when this is all in. It's all insulated. I think it turned out pretty nice. So now I'm going to drop the batteries in. So I dropped one of these in and I noticed that, you know, they're pretty slick. It slides around pretty easy in that tray. So I'm going to pull it out and drop some uh, piece of rubber in the bottom of the tray to help it uh, stop from slipping around. I've cut three pieces of rubber for each side. They're just setting in there. It's just a rubber piece of rubber mat. It's kind of soft but hard. Should last. This will help uh, cushion the blows while it's traveling down the road too. If it starts bouncing, it doesn't uh, damage the battery so much. It'll protect it. Also, hopefully it'll stop it from sliding around. Let's see. The rubber pads work nice and solid, not sliding around. So uh, just want to let you know that these straps did come with the trays below. So that's nice. Um, so what I got is negative here, positive there. So all my positive term terminals will go on this side. Negatives will go here. And I'll jump, like I said before, positive over to positive, negative over to negative. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the wires. The batteries are in place. The wires all in nice and tight. It's hard maneuvering these heavy wires around, but I was able to use the old wires and they worked. So uh, I like how this turned out. So it looks like it also uh, closes really nice, which is good. Um, by having it in here, I'm not taking up cargo space on my other compartments that I have. So I'm going to leave these in here. It works out well. So this completes the project here. Here's uh, some of the tools I used. I kind of got them all in one area and picked up things a little bit. Still got a mess I got to pick up. But there's the lighting I used uh, while I was making the video and working in here when the power was all off. And then here's some of my paperwork I was looking at and other things. So thanks for watching, everybody. This has uh, been a pretty good project. I've been very happy with it. Um, these Battleborn batteries, I'm looking forward to using them and them charging faster than the 6-volt batteries that I had. And just uh, all in all, I think it'll be a, a worth it in the long run. Um, the power output will be a lot more efficient than it was with the 6-volt batteries. Um, so thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Take care. And if you're watching this, I appreciate you watching it to the end. Thank you very much. Happy camping, everybody.